You know, sometimes when you die and you feel kind of bad, like, oh, I was so foolish. This time, I don't really feel all that foolish. I feel like... I feel like I got cheated a little bit on this one. You'll see. It's, uh... It's bad in here. Oh, everybody despawned. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. There's our gear. Place is on fire. He's got my sword. And my, my armor. Okay. Okay. There were about uh, 50 blazes in here. And uh, like 50 zombie pigmen and, and stuff. It was, it was a bad time. Oh, also the place burnt down. I've been spending a lot of time in this area farming up gold at the at the gold farm and and bones at the wither skeleton farm and also in this area is the gas blaster tree thousand and the other gold farm above the bedrock ceiling where we have all the villagers i've learned not to try to trade with villagers in the nether when they're sleeping because <laughs> when you right click them yeah, there's a good chance you're gonna right click the bed and blow everything up so what i do is i come over here and i go through the portal to sleep and then i come back through um, this is kind of what I saw when I went through before. It's a little bit toned down this time, but, like, it just fills up with mobs. It's like, I've created a trap here somehow. This area is totally spawn-proof, which is what's confusing me. Like, they can't wander through the portal here. So I don't know how they're getting into it. There is one more portal in the area, I believe. I think this is also spawn-proof. Yeah, up way over here. This is all slab, though. Like, they're not going to wander through this portal, so I don't know how they're getting there. Let's check this one. Yeah, we got a few guys here. I suspect, you know how zombie pigmen spawn on portal blocks? And they'll probably wander around and then accidentally wander through sometimes. That's That explains where the zombie pigmen come from and why they're at the Podzil area there. But the blazes, where are the blazes coming from <laughs> is what's really confusing me. Uh, I think... Because portals only have a light level of 11, and blazes can spawn at 11 and below, I think they also might be spawning on the portal blocks here and instantly going through. Anyways, let's get to it here. So there's a bit of an odd idea I've been wanting to experiment with, and with the new cave update coming out, this might be a perfect time. We're going to be playing around with maps today. Aha. More specifically, I've been wondering... What kind of redstone devices could we incorporate with maps? You know, we kind of look at them as these static images, but I kind of feel like they can be animated to a certain extent, right? And used to display information, almost like a monitor, right? And with people living underground with the cave update, you're going to have the whole surface of your world free. Maybe we can make some sort of monitor above your base. So I'm imagining you would put your base in the middle of the map and then have all kinds of wacky contraptions on on the surface. Does that make sense? <laughs> what are those wacky contraptions? Well, we're going to experiment and play around with a few ideas here just to see uh, how they work. I think the very first thing, though, we got to figure out what is the re refresh rate on maps, because I don't know. Uh-huh. So a fully zoomed in map is 128 by 128 pixels, and each pixel is represented by a single block. So we got a, a black background here, black concrete, just to... Get a nice contrast if we put a white concrete on top of that bam you see it took a little moment to show up but it did show up and now you can clearly see that one block on our our black background now i'm thinking probably one of the easiest and best ways of animating maps is to do something like this where we have pistons pushing blocks over top of other blocks so uh, the white blocks are going to get pushed over the black blocks and they should change on the map and the maps only really care about the top blocks, so you can cover over this with the black blocks and on the map, you can't really see that, oh, these ones down here are lower than these ones. It doesn't really matter. It just kind of all looks black to us. We don't see the white blocks hidden there. And then when we start controlling the pistons with redstone, it should change? Question mark? Okay, yeah, stuff is happening. <laughs> so I think it's too fast. It can't quite draw it quick enough. It's interesting the line is kind of showing up somewhere in the middle of this too so let's add a bit of delay we'll double it well pretty much double it okay okay we're still getting kind of draw lines on it hmm oh snap okay we got some good news here everybody it seems to be consistent wavy line wavy line solid solid 
and then wavy line, wavy line, and then solid, solid. So it's following a pattern, which is good. When you do redstone, you want stuff to be predictable. Uh, it seems if the delay is too short or too long, it falls out of sync. And I found the perfect delay seems to be one more to this. And now it's like always in sync. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. So what is the refresh rate? Well, redstone torches take two redstone ticks to update. And then we got seven on the repeater. So that's a total of nine redstone ticks. Nine on, nine off for the full cycle. And there's 10 redstone ticks per second. So we're just shy of that. So it's like 1.11 frames per second <laughs> for the ideal rate here. Uh, I say about because the other thing to keep in mind is pistons retract instantly, but they take two redstone ticks to extend. So that gets a little bit confusing. Okay, so now we're doing a distance test, and it seems like it updates at the same rate no matter how far away you are, but if you get over 128 blocks away from it, it'll stop updating. We were just on the border there, so only part of it was updating. If we go further than that, it freezes. We get closer. We're within 128 blocks of it again. Now we can see it updating. And now it froze. Now the other thing is, when you hang them on the wall like this, unfortunately it stops drawing. It actually has to be in your hand, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and now the cycle's off. So the, the other interesting thing about this is, now we're getting wavy lines, right? I think if I go off of it and go back on it, it fixes itself, it sinks. With our first test here, we kept it simple. It's just two frames of animation, white or black, right? But you can obviously, use your full world height and stack multiple pistons on top of each other and get several different frames of animation, different colors, that kind of thing. Um, so with this, right now it's black. Boop. Turned green. Boop. Turned yellow. Boop. Turned red. Another cool thing though is even though we've been using pistons for our animation, there are other methods we could use such as dispensers and shulker boxes as a way of automatically placing uh, colored pixels, right? You can see we got an orange dot there because our shulker box is orange. So it keeps the color of the shulker box as well. It seems uh, certain types of blocks get ignored when drawing maps, such as the redstone dust on the sand here. You can't see that in any way. Uh, unfortunately, redstone lamps also seem to get ignored. You just see the black concrete underneath them. Or like when they're on the sand here, you just see the sand. They don't get drawn at all. Yeah, so I feel like there's a lot of potential for doing fun, cool things with this. I feel like a lot of them would be more just to show off, though. And I'm wondering what are some actual practical applications of it where it's actually going to help you out. Uh, one idea is the progress bar. So all we got to do is run a comparator to the pistons. It's pretty simple, right? Um, you can have a comparator chain going from like maybe deep down underground. You run it up to your display on the surface, and it's like, oh, I wonder how many sugarcane until uh, my sugarcane farm fills up the chest, right? So you can hook it up to an inventory, and now when items go in or out of it, you can actually see on the map where it's at. So that would be kind of cool. Or maybe your sorting system, how long till it's done sorting the items. Or your super smelter, how long till it's done smelting all the items. Another idea is maybe you could hook up some pistons to a minecart track if you wanted to keep track of where the minecart actually is. But uh, I gotta say, it would get pretty annoying if you were riding it yourself. <laughs> this is more like if you're moving mobs around or a storage minecart, I think. It would be cool to see whenever a mob falls down in our mob system here. That's something we could do. That would be a, a good practical application of it. But I'm guessing another problem here is uh, a lot of times the maps don't line up if you don't plan ahead. Yeah, we're like, see this, we're like right on the edge of it, so... Yeah, it's not the greatest, right? <laughs> Let's check the Nexus area here. Maybe we could do something here with it. See how it lines up. Uh, the Super Smelter's kind of in the center there. Hmm. Yeah, I got this problem, though, in my world. You see all the gray lines? That's from a snapshot a long time ago when it messed up my height maps. That's why it rains underground. We're gonna work on our storage room here, everybody. So look at this. It looks like most of the Nexus is actually within frame and pretty much centered too. It's not bad. It's just like we enter the map right over here on this block, we're out of it. So just the very front of the building is cut off. So it's not quite perfect, but like most of the important stuff is within frame here. So that's cool. 
And here's the idea I had. I realized we could modify things slightly to get an extra functionality out of this thing. So for all these item filters that hold our items, we can... Um, what are we going to do here? I'll show you. I'll show you. So we can build this up like so. Boop, boop, boop. Add some redstone going up here. All right. And then we attach that to some target blocks or something. Like this. Boop, boop, boop. And then piston. And when the piston moves, we'll have to remove the blocks above us. But when it moves, it'll show us when an item is going in the item filter or when we're out of storage space for that item. If this is totally full, the piston will stay extended. I think we're going to be using basalt for this. It has a nice black color on the map, so it will give us good contrast. And uh, it's easy to collect, and it's easy to tear down if we realize this is a bad idea. <laughs> but what we're going to do is just highlight the, the area where the pistons extend, and when they extend, it's going to turn red, and that'll indicate that it is full. So you can kind of see how it's going to look on the map here. I was thinking about removing this mountain, but man, is it thick. That's like a 20 or 30 block thick mountain. It's insane. Okay, let's do a little test here. So we're going to put some basalt into the system. We, we're going to keep the map here, I think. And then whenever we want to check it, we'll just take a look. Right now, we only have 32 out of the 256 items set up. So just one row there. And we should see the basalt one trigger. Oh, it is working. Okay, that took a really long time to get there. So I switched it from the red terracotta to end stone. I think it shows up a little bit better. It's just that one little pixel. Now the question is, how useful is this to us actually? So if we were to put some nether bricks in here, let's just do a little test. Um, like, can we figure out what the item is just based on the position of them being lit up? I think we can. I just don't think it's going to be very intuitive. Okay, there it goes. So we count from the right to the left. So that's on the fifth one, the fifth group and the third one on that group. Let's check this out. So we'd have to use the menu to figure it out here. That group of eight there goes from four zero to five F because it's a fifth group and third. This first four here would be the first group. This second one would be the second. These four would be the third. These four would be the fourth and then this would be the fifth group and the third one in the four is the nether brick so it does match up so we can figure it out <laughs> that's a little bit of a mental gy gymnastics though to figure it out it, can you guys think of any better way of doing this oh man okay well i decided to go ahead here and do it for all 256 items in the nexus seemed like a good idea to me at first I actually started doing it and I was like, oh yeah, this is, uh, this is giving me some flashbacks to building the Nexus. It's like, even though it's a simple thing we're doing, because you're multiplying it by 256, it's actually a massive project. And my nemesis, this mountain, <laughs> if this mountain wasn't here, I could do it so fast, but I have to clear it out and look how thick this stupid thing is. There's a lot of land to clear out. So it's going to take a bit of time. Plus, we got to farm up target blocks, a bunch of hay bales. That's not easy to get exactly. And uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll get it done. We're going to do it just because it's something new and exciting. And I want to try it out. As I'm working on this, I'm discovering the odd mistake here and there on the Nexus. It's like, I don't think those wires over there are supposed to be connected. <laughs> Pretty sure that'll mess up the item filters. In total, we're going to need 256 target blocks for this upgrade, which is 256 hay bales. That's a whole lot of wheat. <laughs> so I got to thinking, why don't we go to our, our wheat field here and uh, just clean it up, right? Nice and quick. Well, actually, I think this is a lot slower than using a mini farm. Like, I never do this. I tried it out and it's like, it's not really all that great honestly like I thought oh you know it's all grown already it seems like it would be good but because you got to move around to pick up the stuff and to replant and you end up wasting a lot of time just in the little little gaps in timing between planting and stuff that a mini farm is just like two to three times faster I think if you got it mine broke in the last update so I'm going to build a new one I think this kind of stinks <laughs> All right, so we got one observer going up, one observer going down to the redstone down there, and that's pretty much all we need to do here. Pretty simple. 
Uh, the thing about mini farms, though, is they seem to break every single update. So I think this is my sixth version now. Stand here, right click. That's all you gotta do. You can AFK. And look how fast we're getting the wheat. Like, there's no way you can harvest it that quickly and replant. All right, everybody, so check it out. I've been at this for a few hours now, and I just wanted to catch you up with what's been done. And uh, you can see, cut out a lot of land here. <laughs> the mountain is in a bit of rough shape now. We got to decide what to do with it as well. But yeah, we cut some slits out. And on the map, this is what it looks like currently. So you can see the top layer kind of overlaps with the bottom layer, the block over here. And they kind of just look like they're side by side on the map. So I think that's kind of cool. Good way of doing it. And likewise, on the other side, we also... I couldn't hear anything. I just realized my speakers were off. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh, there's no game sounds. What's going on? And I look and my, my speakers aren't on. That kind of explains it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so we cut out the, the mountain on this side. There was a lot less land over here, so it was easier. Now we got to decide, like, what do we do with this mountain i'm thinking we probably should shape it so it's a little bit more natural looking also um should probably build some more walls on the nexus i know that's like a never done project right but look at this i think it'd look a lot better if there was a wall that went up to at least the basalt there and then like connected to the building there would be good uh also we cut out a bunch of land in the middle of the mountain over here we got more of the displays right there right all this has been cut out. Oh boy. This mountain. <laughs> I hate this mountain so much. Oh man, but it's all it's almost done here. Possibly. So here's here's the real question. What I'm thinking. The thing is, this pattern over here actually looks really cool. Like where we're standing. On the map, anyways, it looks like it would be really cool if we got rid of the land above here too. Um, and likewise on the other side. And if we do that, then there's pretty much nothing left of the mountain and we should just get rid of it, right? <laughs> so I'm deciding if we should do that or not. Again, it's a lot more land to clear. But I think it might be worth it. I think it, I think it would be good if we just got rid of it and like tried to refine the area. Because it never really looked proper, even the way it was before. I always debated if I should get rid of the mountain or not. But I think I should wait for you guys' feedback before making that decision. So I'm going to wait on uh, doing that today. Let's finish what we were working on here. We have six out of the eight rows done. Just two left. Just two more rows. And uh, <laughs> we hit a snag. A huge snag. It looks like uh, it might be near impossible. Not quite impossible. I did figure out a way of doing it. But man, was it a head scratcher. Okay, so the thing is, we have to... Where is it? Yeah, these are the item filters down here. We need to connect to these and then somehow have the map see us. How on earth are we going to do that? It's actually possible. I did figure out a way. Uh, it's a bit weird, though. Okay, so for one thing, let's see here. The way I've been doing the other ones, for the most part, is like this. I hook the target blocks over here, and then you can put the piston on top. And that's pretty much all you got to do, right? Nice and simple. End stone in front of that. And then when it extends, the map sees it. But guess what? If we do that, it's going to be right in the center. The map will see it. But then the other side is also going to end up over here. And when this side extends, they're going to be in the same place. And that can't happen, right? There's not enough space is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Again, this is an afterthought. I didn't plan to do this to the Nexus. I just thought, hey, let's see if we can do it today. Um... And yeah, so what we're going to do, I figured out another way of arranging this, actually. Or did I? I can't remember it now. Something to do with torches. Uh, yeah, okay, I remember, I remember. So what we're going to do is put the sticky pistons above. The arms will be extended. We're going to do, like, reverse pistons. So when they retract, then we'll be able to see the end stone. So on the map, the piston arms look gray, which is fine because, like... The default color is gray on all the other ones as well. What we're going to do is hide the end stone underneath the piston arms. And when they retract, then we'll see the end stone. And by doing that, we save one block of space. It doesn't go to the middle anymore. It's one block short. And we'll be able to do that on both sides. Now, again, the problem is we have blocks above that. And 
There's redstone on those blocks. We can't exactly get rid of them. So what are we going to do? If we look from up above here, we can kind of see what's in our way. There's this stone brick with the redstone on top and then this stone brick. And this stone brick actually serves a function as well. It keeps the wire from connecting there. Remember how not all blocks are visible on maps. Well, lamps have a special property where they're a solid block, but they're invisible on maps. So we can use that to cut the wire. And then for the lower one, we don't really want these lamps flashing on and off constantly because that'll create an insane amount of lag. They won't be affected on this top layer because the redstone's beside it. But for the lower layer here, if the redstone's on the lamps, we don't want them lighting up. So on the lower layer, we're going to use glass, which is also invisible on uh, maps. And that should do it. <laughs> like that, I think. And then the map will be able to see the end stone below here when the piston is retracted. Uh, let's do a little test here. Get rid of the torches. And yeah, I can see the end stone. Put this back, and now it should be gray. Yeah, now it's gone. <laughs> oh, snappers. All right, everybody. We got her done. It was tricky, but we did it. We got... 256 single pixel displays on the Nexus now to show us the position of where the items are going in, when they're going in, and also we can see when the inventories are full with just that single pixel. So it would be cool if we had more information on, on here, like what the items actually were at each of the positions, you know, uh, if we could see when the inventories were empty, when they were at 20% full, 40%, you know, have a range of fullness. But with the Nexus being, like, so old and unplanned for this, it's not possible. This is about the only thing we could do. There's not... The way the, the redstone's laid out, we can't add any more onto it, really. Because <laughs> it's all, like, clumped together, you know? Uh, so you'd have to plan that out from the start of your storage room. But it is definitely possible. Now, I do know how this is laid out. So I can figure out the where the items are just based on the position. If you look at the top right there, it's uh, on the fifth row third from the right third group from the right and fourth item so these three chests here are for rows one to four these three are for rows five to eight i might number it on the map actually might make it a little clearer uh but since it's in the fifth row third from the right and fourth item this is a group of one here group of two group of, third group here fourth item is grass so it's a grass block that is lit up right now there's no space for it in the Nexus. So I can figure it out. This is not the, the best, right? <laughs> uh, you know what I realized, though? I probably got a bunch of comments on this. We can add text to this as well using banners. Oh, man. Maybe we do that, too. At the very least, we should use that to number the rows. That, that would be a good idea, I think. But we could, like, name the items maybe, too, with, with text. So I want to play around with that just real quick here. This has been in the game for such a long time now, and I feel like so many people forget about it, myself included. Even though I've used it a few times now, I, I always forget about it still. Um, let's just try... do that. Is that how you spell netherrack? I don't even know. <laughs> let's try place it somewhere and see what it looks like. I think the more you write on the banner, the smaller the text gets. I think you gotta right-click it. Yeah, so it'll show up. But that text is pretty big, right? And also, oh yeah, the banner gets marked too, as well as the color. So we got a big banner there now too. So maybe with some clever shorthand writing, there would be a way of like marking each one. But uh, it'd have to be very compact. Uh-huh. So I think that's all the map stuff we're going to be doing for today. But before we wrap up, I'm going to try to sneak in one quick build project here as well. So we've... Uh, added paths and stuff around our world, right? I want to try polish things up a bit more. This is a good start. I think having paths like this is great, but uh, these are very, very plain, very simple at the moment still. <laughs> we want to add more onto them. This area is a little bit more developed, but even this can get even more developed, I feel. So let's work on uh, this area over here. We got the trees on the left, which is nice. We kind of got something around the water, but it's uh, it can be improved quite a bit still. Um, what I want to try to do is add like a retaining wall along here. So it looks like it's holding the grass, the dirt from, you know, falling over. We're going to go for bricks just so we have a different color. 
the gravel is kind of grayish and this goes well with it but it's a different color so it'll help add a bit more to the area here and we might want to mix some andesite in with this as well let's do andesite slabs and maybe we'll just add these all along the path on the outside one mistake i made with this though is i made my paths too thin I think we should try fatten them up wherever we can. There's not a lot of space over here, but uh, maybe one or two blocks thicker would be better. So on this side, we're going to go right on the path. But I think on this side, let's like try to build it out by at least a block here. Man, I got to say, I would love to get better at landscaping in this game. Like if you think about it, probably at least 95% of your world is the land, right? Then like 5% or less is the buildings. And then the redstone, the stuff I do the most, you don't even see that. You try to hide that stuff, right? <laughs> so like a very small portion of my world feels developed at the moment. But if I got better at landscaping, like that would cover a lot of the world. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things I probably just got to do it a bit and I'll get better at it, you know? Um, yeah. You learn tricks and then once you learn those tr tricks, you always have them. Good stuff. All right, so we just did a little section here. Nothing too major, but I think it helps uh, quite a bit, actually. We got to do uh, more stuff like this, I feel. <laughs> like, if you think about it, if you do too much redstone in your world, your your world kind of sucks because it's just like a, almost like a, a creative world. Like, you just got random stuff everywhere that doesn't really look too good. Uh, if you do too much building, you got nothing functional in your world. And it's not not all that great either, right? you do just farm building it's like you got all these farms and you never use the resources on on actually building anything or if you don't do any landscaping your world doesn't feel like it's tied together at all so it's like a, a bounce minecraft is a bounce if you want a really good world you kind of got to master everything <laughs> and uh yeah maybe one day right so anyways let's get to the comment of the day it says how did he get like a stack and a half of sand from a tnt explosion in the desert so last episode we did the resource gathering and yeah this confuses a few people so for one thing i've heard that bedrock edition didn't get the change uh, mojang made a change uh, over a year ago i think maybe in 1.14 i don't quite remember but they made it so tnt in the java 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 whatever you want to say edition specifically will always get 100 percent of the drops now which is great. Now, don't get confused, though. That doesn't mean creepers will will drop everything when they explode or or gas balls or any of the other explosions. Just TNT will drop everything and just in the Java edition. So, yeah. And it's great for farming stuff. Like, TNT is amazing in this game now. Use it for everything. Everything. Or you're a sucker. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.